Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Uh, my name is Nyamgu Agadji and this is Plus TV Africa. Uh, today on the show we'll be uh, looking at some uh, hot topics. First of all it will be that the federal government unveils blueprint for universal access to financial services across Nigeria. And then uh, Governor Obaseki announces 70,000 Naira new minimum wage. Uh, those are our hot topics this morning. We're also are going to be looking at top trending issues, uh, issues that uh, caught our fancy in the course of the last 24 hours. And then we will go to the press and see what is on uh, the front pages of some of our national dailies this morning. In the meantime, we'll just take a, sh a breather uh, to uh, look at what the quote is and set the tone for today's program. Stay with us. Gardens. Our wheels are our gardeners. Our bodies are our gardens. Our wheels are our gardeners. That's according to William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare said that. Our bodies are our gardens. Our wheels are our gardeners. So, whatever your body is telling you, uh, it, it just goes to tell you, uh, like we've been saying all the time, that whatever you are imagining in your mind, whatever is in your heart, whatever you think that you can do, that controls a lot of what happens in the physical. It's like, you know, uh, the spiritual and the physical. So your mind is a very powerful tool to shape who you are. So if you have the discipline in your mind, for instance, to hit the gym, if you need to do that, uh, it is your mind that will form that discipline and then your body follows through. That is what it means. So uh, have a very great mind, have a very strong mind, have a very strong will so that you can shape uh, the physical to your advantage. Uh, as, as simple as that, that is how I, what I got from that. So the body is a garden and the will or the mind is the gardener so the gardener is the one who takes care of the garden so you get the point very good so your body depends on what is inside of you inside what you can imagine what you can decide inside of you and then uh, you translate that in the physical well that is it for the quote for today i do hope that in this midweek you are going to have a positive mindset and then it will help to shape everything that is in the physical okay so without uh, further ado we are going to just go into our top trending issues for this morning before we take another breather uh, to come back for uh, the um, the newspapers the first one is that the federal government approved salary raise for civil servants um, now the federal government on tuesday approved 25 uh, percent and 35 percent salary increase for civil servants across various consolidated salary structures according to a statement signed by the head of press national salaries incomes and wages commission emmanuel njoku the increases takes effect on january 1 2024 that means they are going to have areas of that the statement added that the um, augmentation applies to the six remaining consolidated salary structures namely the Consolidated Public Service Salary Structure, Consolidated Research and Allied Institutions Salary Structure, Consolidated Police Salary Structure, Consolidated Paramilitary Salary Structure, Consolidated Intelligence Community Salary Structure, and Consolidated Armed Forces Salary Structure. Also approved for augmentation is the pension of retirees enrolled in the Defined Benefit Scheme uh, within the aforementioned consolidated salary structures from 20% to 28% effective from the same date, that is January. Previously, the federal government had increased the salary for sectors such as tertiary education and health, encompassing structures like the consolidated university academic salary structure, consolidated tertiary institution salary structure, consolidated polytechnics and colleges of education academic staff salary structure, consolidated tertiary educational institutions salary structure, consolidated medical salary structure, and consolidated health sector salary structure. So little by little, bit by bit, we're getting there. Um, we don't know how this will affect the demands of labor uh, that is asking for um, a great raise in the salary. Uh, we don't know how it will affect it. Today is Labor Day. Today is Workers' Day. And so we are 
hoping to hear more from Labour and even more from uh, the government. Let's hear how this will affect um, the agitation by Labour for an increase in the salary. Okay, so it's a, it's a good thing. It means that the government is uh, trying to do something better for the workers. But um, like James Ingram would say, I did my best, but I guess my best isn't good enough. Is the best that the government doing good enough or they need to step up uh, their game? Or is, the, is it that the labor itself is being insensitive? Or no, let's just look inwards and see what is really happening. Everybody needs to smile back home after a day's labor. Okay, we're going to the second one. The CBN stops OP, MoneyPoint, others from onboarding new customers. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has stopped mobile money operators, including fintech firms like Opay, Pampay, Kuda Bank, and MoneyPoint, from onboarding new customers. However, no secular was served by the Apex Bank in that respect. The affected fintech companies were reported to have accounts being used for illicit foreign exchange transactions. OP confirmed the development in a statement on Tuesday saying it has paused the onboarding of new customers to support government efforts to clean up the financial industry. Meanwhile, Justice Emeka Nwite of the Federal High Court Abuja has granted the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, an interim order to freeze 1,146 bank accounts belonging to individuals and companies being investigated for alleged offenses uh, bordering on unauthorized dealing in forex exchange, money laundering, and terrorism financing. The judge ordered that the accounts be frozen pending conclusion of investigation. Um, so uh, this does not mean, because a lot of people have said, oh, they have banned OP, Money Point, and CUDA, and all that. that this does not mean they have been banned. Uh, they are still in operation, but they cannot take in new customers. That is what it is. And that is because uh, the government is suspecting some foul play in some of the accounts uh, that are domiciled in these banks, in these fintechs. So they want to do what they need to do. And uh, this, uh, these fintechs have also said, okay, uh, whatever the government needs to do, we need to cooperate. So they have told their customers uh, to, to pause. Not even their customers, their uh, intending customers, their potential customers, their would-be customers to pause that they may not take uh, new people. And this is not indefinitely. It is for a particular time, even though we've not been given that it's six months or one year or anything, but it's not going to be forever. So these accounts, if they find out that some accounts have been uh, used for illicit transactions, then those accounts will uh, face the rot of the law. It's not that the fintechs have been wiped off uh, the face of the, the earth or whatever. So don't get it wrong. They are still operating, they are still doing whatever they need to do, but people who bank with them, who want to bank with them, uh, may not have that opportunity anymore for some time. That's what it means. So, you're safe. Um, now, Ipman, that is Independent Petrol Marketers Association of Nigeria, has threatened to shut down over 200 billion Naira debt. That's coming five days after NNPC Limited assured consumers that it had resolved logistic challenges that caused the present scarcity of petrol. Uh, they are saying, uh, that by, that, by they I mean the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, uh, they are threatening to shut down operations over failure by the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, NMDPRA, to pay about 200 billion bridging debts owed its members. Checks around the federal capital territory in Abuja city center t on Tuesday showed that the shortage in petrol supply had not eased in several, as several filling stations remained shot with long queues seen at the few outlets opened to the public. Black marketers continued to have a field day selling the products in kegs and jerry cans for 1,200 naira per litre, just one litre. Speaking to journalists in Abuja, members of Ipman Depot's chairman uh, chairman Forum said all efforts made to get NMDPRA to refund their petrol bridging claims in the last two years have yielded very little results. The spokesman of the group and chairman of Ipman Abba Depot, Mazi Oliver Okolo, said uh, NMDPRA has failed to implement in full the directive by the Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Oil, 
Senator Henneken Lopobiri during a stakeholders meeting on February 20, 2024, that the marketers should be paid with 40 days period, or should by 40 days period be paid. According to him, only the sum of 13 billion naira has been paid. He also explained that groups' unhappiness with the indiscriminate increment of over 500% in the issuance and renewal of sales and storage license by NMDPRA and the subsequent delays in acquiring the license which its members have been recently subjected to. Okolo explained that Ipman is poised to take far-reaching decisions that may cripple the supply and sale of petroleum products across Nigeria if its demands are not met with the shortest part, within the shortest possible time. Uh, the chairman of IPMAD, Depot's chairman forum, Al-Haji Yahaya Al-Hassan, also asked the federal government to intervene and ensure that independent marketers are able to obtain petrol from NNPC limited depots against the current arrangement where independent marketers were compelled to patronize private depots. Okay, uh, I do hope that it will not be politicized and people are just trying to say, oh, okay, uh, the people are, who are doing this, who are trying to protest, who are trying to demand for this, want to um, rubbish the, the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. It's not everything that is tied to politics. Do the needful if you make a promise like they say, agreement, now agreement. That's what we say in Nigeria. So if you make an agreement to do something, do it. As simple as that. So that whenever that person wants to disrupt activities, you can show your evidences. Not this one that, what do we say again? You go explain tire, no evidence. That's not what we need in Nigeria right now. If these people go on strike, if there is a problem, like right now people are already um, very, very uh, stressed out. The, the, the transportation has gone like 200% in some places because of the fuel scarcity. Everything else has gone up, you know, as, as, it's as bad as that. We're grappling with so many problems in Nigeria, we shouldn't be adding avoidable ones to the problems that we're facing. It's already been said that even if today uh, it, was, it has been promised that in Lagos State today, uh, the queues will ease, uh, like they will go away in Lagos and Ogun State. We've been told that in a place like Abuja, it might take a little while before that happens because it's far away from Lagos. I mean, what is really happening? Please, whoever is in charge, whoever is in authority, whoever needs to uh, sit up should sit up. Nigerians can only take so much because, you know, nobody, nobody can say that they are very comfortable right now, no matter how rich you are. Because if you're rich and you can afford everything that you need in life, you cannot afford uh, safety because everybody is afraid. You are rich, you can buy food, you can buy clothes, you can house yourself, you can do anything, you can send your child to school, but you cannot move freely. So you're also affected. So everybody in Nigeria is affected because of what is happening. So whoever is in authority, whatever we need to do to make sure that it's not in giving palliatives, that you go to households and then in a community of maybe a thousand people, you are giving five people and you're saying that uh, that community has been, has been uh, covered and all that. We're tired of seeing this. What can be done that will make Nigerians, um, wherever they are, feel the impact of government's presence? Not removing subsidy from everything. Power subsidy gone, uh, oil subsidy gone, education subsidy gone, uh, health subsidy gone, everything gone, gone, gone. Then the people will go as well. That's why the Jaffa syndrome is getting out of hand right now. So anyway, Nigeria uh, will be better and we are all going to contribute. But some of us may not contribute in making policies, but will contribute in making the noise on behalf of the people. And that's what we're doing right now. Nigeria is ours. Let's make it great again. Okay, uh, that's the much we can take from uh, the top trending issues this morning. Uh, when we take the break, we're going to look at the weather. We're going to pay some bills. And then when we uh, return, we'll be looking at the front pages of some of our national dailies. Stay with us.